Good morning, church. Let's go ahead and pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have to, to sing songs of praise to you, to encourage and uplift and support one another, to learn from your word and to, to just grow as believers. Lord, I ask that you give us eyes that are open, ears that hear, hearts that are joyful, enthusiastic, that are fruitful, eager to multiply, to show others the joy we found in you. Help us to always be your people. Bless our study this morning, our worship this morning. Help us to grow in the knowledge of you and your word and apply that to our lives. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So on February 1st, my grandmother broke her neck. On February 2nd, she was placed in her neck brace. And she despises the thing, absolutely hates it. When she's got this neck brace on, she can't wear her dentures, so she has a hard time eating. She can't wear her hearing aids, and so she can't hear. She can't drive because she can't turn her neck. And she's even been told not to pick things up off of the floor, lest it cause too much strain. Now, my grandmother is a Navy wife. Dad served for, for 20 years, and so for her, independence is a high priority. And I think what she hates most about the brace is the knowledge that with it on, she has to ask for help. I don't think she likes that very much. And so when she got this news about her neck and about the brace, she asked us to pray for her. She asked us to ask God to heal her quickly. And so we prayed. She asked this congregation and many others to pray for her. And in fact, people responded to that call. There are churches all along the East Coast and as far west as Colorado praying for a speedy recovery for my grandmother. And then last Saturday, about uh, two months after the break, she, uh, she called me. We were on our way back from, from Searcy, and she called me, and she was pretty emotional. She had just gotten off the phone with the doctor and was fully expecting to get a clear bill of health. She's free from the neck brace, and everything's fine. She can move on. Unfortunately, that's not the news the doctor shared with her. In fact, he gave her rather bleak news. Bleak is probably an understatement. He told her that She's not free from the brace, that he doesn't know how they missed it with their first x-rays, but she didn't just break her neck, she broke six vertebrae as well. As if that wasn't troubling enough, as if that news didn't make us both pretty emotional, there was a third thing that the photos showed. There was an anomaly in the x-rays along her back that he didn't feel comfortable diagnosing without a second opinion. We were scared. We were pretty worked up. It was, it was an emotional thing to hear my grandmother say, I know what my faith says, I know where I'm going when my time comes, but I was really hoping for some more time. That's hard. And so we prayed. And we cried, and then we prayed. And we hung up the phone. And I immediately called a friend of mine, a member of this congregation, and I told him, I said, I don't want to talk, I want to tell. I needed to talk about it, get it out of my mind. And, and he listened and he supported me and I'm grateful for that. And as we hung up, as we went our separate ways, we both prayed for my grandmother. My friends, I have a good reason for telling you about the events of last weekend. It's, it's not just because I love my grandmother very much or because I want you to continue to pray for her. It's because we serve a God who hears prayers and answers prayers. She called me Monday, just two days after that difficult phone call. And she asked me, she says, Dale, have you looked at the photo I just sent you? See, my phone had been acting up all day. So I said no, and she says, well, then I want you to hang up, go look at the text, and then call me back. Being the ever good son that I am, I followed instructions. 
And uh, I hear you, David. And uh, I hung up the phone. And there in my inbox is a picture of my grandmother smiling ear to ear with no neck brace on. She, I called her back and she goes, I just got off the phone with the doctor. And I said, okay. She says, I've got some good news. I said, okay. She says, my neck's better. He's cleared me from my brace. I said, well, that's wonderful. What about your back? And she goes, that's the thing. They don't think any more treatment is necessary. It has healed well enough on its own upon closer inspection. Wow, okay. What about the anomaly, that thing that had us so scared, that thing that had us thinking her time was drawing near, nearer than we wanted it to? She says, it's nothing more than arthritis. Arthritis that wasn't there before she broke her neck, but had formed. But it was arthritis nonetheless. Not some big, scary monster creeping in the darkness of a photograph. Arthritis. I have not seen nor heard her that happy in months. It was refreshing. This weekend, I learned something very important, something I hope we all leave here having learned as well. I learned to better understand what Jesus talks about in Matthew 7, verses 7 through 8. And if you would, go ahead and turn there, please. Here Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Ask, ask, and you will receive. Well, here's the thing. I was certainly asking. She was asking. The whole family was asking. This church and dozens of others were asking. We all asked not once, but we asked many, many times for her recovery. And I'm going to call it what I truly believe it is. God performed a miracle on behalf of a woman that people prayed persistently for. You don't just go from one day to two days later thinking, okay, the end is here to a full and speedy recovery without the intervention of a holy God. It doesn't work that way. We need to remember that our blessings come to us in the, in, the, in the context of persistence as we seek, as we ask, and as we knock, as we keep on asking, as we keep on seeking, and as we keep on knocking. In fact, if we were to go back and read this passage in its original language, that is how it reads. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Yet human beings, I think we have this rather unfortunate habit of resisting that guidance. Sometimes we're resistant to the idea of being persistent with our prayers, aren't we? Despite the fact that Jesus teaches us not just here but multiple places that it is important that we continually talk to God about the things on our hearts. He tells us to be persistent, and yet we resist. He doesn't just teach us it here, but what about the parable of the persistent widow in in Luke 18? He talks about it there too, doesn't he? It's the story of a woman who had been done a disservice. And so she continually petitioned the courts for justice. She did this day after day after day. And eventually, through her persistence... Justice was served on her behalf. And at the end of this parable, Jesus asks his disciples a question. And it's a question that I personally find a little little troubling, if I'm to be honest. He asks the question, when the Son of Man returns, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? It's a challenging question. It's a question he asks in the context of 
being persistent in the context of a prayerful, persistent Christian. And just as he asked his disciple that question, I think we need to ask ourselves a similar question. Do I show Jesus my faith by being persistent with my petitions before him? Or do I ask him one time and then get disappointed when I don't feel I got a response? I can't help but wonder why we do do that sometimes. Why we're so resistant to the idea of being persistent in our prayers to God. We're told to pray without ceasing, yet sometimes we don't do that, do we? Sometimes we don't do that. Christians, we're supposed to be the children of Israel, are we not? A very, the very man who earned his name by struggling literally all night, wrestling with God, again, all night long, literally wrestling. I know I said that, but I want to emphasize this. He wrestled with God in a physical sense. And he persisted in his wrestling match with God even after receiving a wound. A limp that he would carry the rest of his life. And yet what is it Israel or Jacob at that time before he'd been blessed? What is it Jacob said to God while he's holding him in his arms? I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now let's think about that for just a second. Do we really think that Jacob, a mere human being, had the power or the strength to hold God in his arms and make demands of him? The creator of the universe bound and restrained by a mere person. Of course, we don't believe that. We know that's not the case. We understand that God had the ability and the authority and the right to remove himself from Jacob and turn and look at him and say, I'm not going to bless you. God could have said no. But in this particular example, in this instance, that's not what God does. He rewards Jacob because Jacob was persistent. Now there's another lesson there. It's hidden a little bit, but it is important. We know from our study of the Lord's Prayer that we have to be willing to pray, not our will, but God's be done. We have to know that even when we're persistent in our prayers, that they're prayers that have to be done with a willingness to accept no as an answer. That can be hard. It can be difficult when we don't see things going the way we want them to. We can get discouraged and think that, okay, all of our persistence and all of our praying, it's not actually amounting to anything. But I believe there's not a person in this room that can say with 100% certainty that when they look back at prayers they've prayed before where the answer was not what they wanted, looking back at it in hindsight, that it was still a bad thing they didn't get what they wanted. Right? God knows what he's doing even if we don't know what we're asking for. And so we have to continue to be persistent. But in all things we pray that God does what God needs to have done. Just as we are persistent in our petitions to God, we need to be persistent in our pursuit of him and his kingdom as well. Flip your Bibles over to Galatians 6, 9, please. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. We can't allow ourselves to get discouraged. We can't get, grow tired in our pursuit of the kingdom. Because in our search for, for God, in our search for his kingdom, good things are going to happen. Good things will find their way to us. We're going to find not only what we're looking for, but we're going to find a lot more than that. 
We're going to find the love in its, of Christ in a true and perfect form, the kind of love that only Jesus could show us. We'll find hope, hope the way it's described in Jeremiah 29, 11. And I know most of us know that verse by heart, but I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. When we're searching after God, we have hope. We always have hope. Not just those things or many other things, but what about peace? When we're searching after God, are we going to find peace? Well, according to Isaiah 26.3, we will. Because you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So not just peace, but perfect peace comes from a relationship that searches after God. And so if you're seeking after the Lord of Lords, we can be assured that blessings are going to happen. If we're persistent, we're going to find. We know this is true because Jesus tells us it's true. He tells us that as we ask, as we seek, and as we knock, that he will hear us, he will respond to us, and he will aid us. But even though we know this to be true, sometimes we can grow tired in our pursuits, can't we? Sometimes we can get discouraged. And when that happens, when we're impatient and waiting for a door of opportunity to open that just doesn't seem to want to open, when we feel like our prayers aren't being heard or our search won't come to an end, God had an answer for those moments too. He created for us his church. God, knowing the very nature of man, knowing that it was not good for us to be alone or to try to do everything by ourselves, created the very body that is surrounding us this morning. A body of believers who exist to love, support, and encourage one another. That's what we're here for. When we're feeling tired, when we're feeling weary, he doesn't want us to feel those things on our own. We have him and we have each other. So let us be people who encourage one another and are willing to be encouraged. That one can be just as challenging, the willingness to accept help, to be encouraged. And as we rely on each other for support, let us continue our pursuits together and with confidence. There's a song that we sing sometimes, and it's a song that I've, I've loved since I was a teenager. And, and I think it applies very well to today's worship service. The lyrics go like this. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I would be a fool. Because you are my all in all. Is Jesus your all in all? When you feel like those prayers aren't being heard, pray anyway. Because they are. When you're seeking after his kingdom and you feel like your world is just falling apart, all you're finding is opposition and bad news and loss, fear, Satan is attacking you left and right and you don't know what to do, seek the kingdom anyway. And when you're not sure what your future holds, you don't know what door to knock on, what door is going to open for you, knock on all of them and keep on knocking until the door opens. Jesus tells us he'll open it and so we can trust that he will. We serve a God who does not lie. We serve a God who loves us. He is there for those who ask, seek, and knock. So we need to ask ourselves one final question this morning. Are we going to be persistent in our pursuits of God? If you've not yet started your journey, putting on Jesus in baptism, following him, searching after him, now's a fine time to do it. And if there's something else on your heart or on your mind this morning, now's a great time to come forward as well while we stand and while we sing.